Good morning children. Today we are going to start with chapter 5 of civics and the name of the chapter is Women Change the World. Children, did you remember when we were doing the chapter growing up as boys and girls? We studied that how in the long past the women they were not allowed to go out of the house. They were only made to do domestic jobs and they have to take care of the families. But slowly as the time passed the scenario is changed. The women they came out of their houses, they started educating themselves and they even started doing different jobs. But to achieve to this height, they had to go over for a long run. Different struggles took place. Different movements were there. And after a long run of fight, finally they came out of their houses and they started working hand in hand with the males. So today in our class, Women Change the World, we are going to study further how the women started moving on this path, how they came out of their houses and they fought for their justice and finally they succeeded. But still, today in some families in the remote backward area, there is discrimination between the male and the females. But let's go to the chapter and find out how the women struggled and how they are still struggling in some way or the other to get justice for themselves. So children, I was talking about how women can change the world. Women, as I have told you in the previous chapter, that in the past, women, they were not allowed to go out of their houses. Neither they were allowed for education, but they were made to do household work, live inside the houses, and only the male child was permitted for education. But as the time passed, the women, they struggled a lot. They struggled for their right. They fought for their right, for the justice. They started with many different movements. And finally, what is the scene today? How is the women today? By getting education, women, they got opportunities to rise in every field. Women's movement, it has given rise to challenge discrimination in all parts of the world. Today, both boys and girls, they attend school in large numbers. So, women today, they have broken all the chains and they have come out of their houses. Now, let's see fewer opportunities and rigid expectation. What does it mean? A lot of people feel that women today are fit only for certain kinds of jobs like nurse. They are not fit for the technical jobs. In most families, women are taught that after school, they have to get married. Lakshmi Lakhera, however, broke the stereotype image when she became the first woman engine driver of the Northern Railways. We live in a society full of pressures. If boys do not work hard, get a good salary, they are builded. So, children, 
by going through these points, it is very much clear that the people today in some parts of the country, they still have that stereotype image. They feel that the women, they are fit only for certain kinds of jobs like nurse, teachers, but they are not fit for the technical jobs. And even in some families, the people, the head of the family, they are of the fear, belief that women has to get married after the school. Then the example of Lakshmi Lakhera is given. She broke this stereotype, this similar image as she became the first woman engine, engine driver of the Northern Railways. Children, we all know that we live in a society which is full of pressures. If boys do not get work hard, they do not get a good salary, they are builded. There is a pressure on them. Then as the time passed, the learning started for a change, which means that the women, they got education and they brought a change in the society. Going to school is an important part of life. Today, it is very difficult for us to imagine that school and learning could be seen as out of bounds or not appropriate for some children. In the past, very few people learnt reading and writing. Most children learnt the work their families or elders did. Even in families where skills like pottery, weaving and craft were taught, the contribution of daughters and women was seen as secondary. So children, going to school, as we all know, as is an important part of life. And today, it is very difficult to imagine that school and learning could be out of the reach of the children. But in the past, very few people, they learned reading, writing and most children, they worked their fa for their families as elders did. And even in some families, their skills were like pottery weaving and they were made to do as their fathers did. In the 19th century, but children in the 19th century, new ideas about learning and education appeared, but there was a lot of opposition to educate girls ever then. So children, even in the 19th century, the new ideas about learning, educating, they appeared, but most of the people, they were against the education of girls. In 1890s, Ramabal championed the cause of women's education. Rokeya, Sakhavat Hussain learnt English from her elder brother and an elder sister in spite of family opposition and went on to become a famous writer. Ra Sundari Devi of Bengal, she was the first Indian woman to write an autobiography called Amar Jeevan. So children, these are the few examples from history that in spite of the great opposition from the elders, from the family members, these females, these ladies, they come out of their houses, they come out in front and they achieved lot of success in so many different fields. So let's see what is the difference in their education. India has a census every 10 years which counts the population of the country. This information is used to measure things like literacy, sex ratio, etc. So children, every 10 years the survey is being done in our country. And this survey, this information is used to collect information like the literacy rate and the sex ratio and etc. 
A huge number of SC and ST children, they leave school at an early age. In 2014 census, even shows that Muslim girls are less likely than Dalit girls to complete primary education, primary schooling. Many reasons like non-availability of teachers and schools, lack of transport, cost of education, indifferent attitude of teachers and parents are responsible for negligence of education. So, children, here also a few examples of the past is given that why there is difference in education in some parts. So, according to the 1961 census, about 40 percent of all boys and men were literate compared to just 15 percent of all girls and women. In the most recent census of 2001, these figures have grown to 76 percent for boys and men and 54 percent for girls and women. Children, can you see such a great difference is there in the literacy rate of the males and that of females? And this table shows the percentage of girls and boys who leave schools from different social groups. Children, you can go through this table and try to understand the primary level, the elementary level that is from 6 to 8 and the secondary level of the schooling of the boys, girls of SCST and total of them. Now, women's movement, why the women raise movements. Women have individually and collectively struggled to bring about changes and this is called women's movement. So, they fought very hard individually as well as in groups for their rights, for the education to bring changes in the society, to bring changes in the mental level of the people. And this is called women's movement. Different strategies have been used to spread awareness, fight discrimination and seek justice. So, children different strategies, different policies have been used to spread awareness amongst the people, to fight this discrimination between boys and girls and to seek justice to the females. And these movements, they are related to campaigning, campaigning, rising awareness, protesting and showing solidarity. So, why these movements took place? To bring awareness, to fight education and to seek justice, to bring equality amongst the people. So, that is all for today children. I hope you have understood the chapter and for better understanding go through the chapter, read the chapter thoroughly and go through the table which is given in the book. That is all for today. Thank you. Have a good day.